Appreciate you. I just started recording. All right. And I'll record each time. So can All anybody right. tell me how to print to the console? Again, I want this to be a dialogue, not a monologue. System.out.printline. There you go. System.out.printline. And for this one, I'm just going to say hello world. All right. So system.out.printline is how to print to the console. Whatever you want to print, you got to put in parentheses and uh, hello world and quotation marks. So for this um, program, I have to do visualize code. And you'll see over here on the right is what memory is. So in memory, when you do a method, which is what our main is, that gets stored in memory. Our program output or the console will be down here. And where we currently are in our program is what's highlighted in yellow. If I'm on that first line, hit forward, hit again, you see it prints out hello world. Now we're on line four. Next, our method technically returns void. So return value is void over here and we're done. Program is pretty straightforward. I do have, hold on, I forget what it's called, quick something. There you go, pointer focus, so that you can see my mouse. All right, so our return value is void. Very basic program. This is essentially the first one that you'll ever do um, intro to programming. Any questions about that? Anything I did? All right, let's go to a little bit more difficult. Not really. So instead of hello world, let's print hello shall you. Same thing, visualize execution, hit forward. You see it prints out hello shall you, and we're done. Our return value for our method, our main method is void, and we're done with that method, all right? All right, so the next step is going to be creating variables, right? How do we create variables and why do we create variables? Can anybody tell me why we create variables? I'm gonna start calling on people if I don't get an answer. Why do we create variables? Anybody? All right, I'm gonna help you out this time. So we create variables to store data in our program, all right? And so for example, say I read in a variable, right, and I wanna use it later on down the line. I store that variable, I store that data in that variable so that I can use it later, all right? And it's stored in memory, and you'll see that in a second over here. You'll see that it gets stored in memory and it retains that value in memory. So let's create a variable that holds this string right here. So instead of having it right here, let's create a variable. So to create a string variable which holds words and letters, string hello equals, let's paste that value. So now instead of doing system.out.println and then typing this all out, I can just print out my variable, which I named hello. Again, the format is the type, the name, and then whatever the value is, okay? All right, so now we're on line three. You see over here, I have this variable called hello, and its value is hello shall you. So then when I, when I get to line five and I print out this variable, it should print out, hello, show you. That is the value of this variable. We finish, that's it. Any questions so far about variables? Don't be shy. There's my dogs. The benefits of working from home. All right. So next, let's read in this variable from the console. All right. So we're going to read in from the console. What do I need in order to read in from the console? A scanner. 
Yeah, scanner, there you go. So in order to use a scanner, we do have to import that. So I think it's java.util, well first is import, java.util.scanner. All right, so the scanner object is a basic Java library, if you will. It's, it's basic code that comes prepackaged with Java. In order to actually use it in our program so that we can read from the console, we have to import it in. We have to tell Java that, hey, we want to use the scanner. All right, so let's create a scanner object. So scanner input, I'm going to name it input. And again, this is a variable, right? The type of this variable is a scanner. And we're saying we're going to name it input equals new scanner system dot in. So in this class, we will learn how to read from a file. So if I have a file, whatever, if I save a file, we're going to learn how to read that in. So right here, we would put our file right here instead of system dot in. But we're putting system dot in to tell that tell the scanner object that we want to read in from the console system dot in. If you notice system dot in means we're reading from the console system dot out means that we're printing out to the console. So there you go. So instead of saying um, hello world here, let's say let's read this in from the console. So let's do input, which is the name of my scanner object, dot next. We're calling the dot next method to read in whatever next value is from the console. Whenever we read from the console, we do want to prompt our user, system.out.println. Please enter the string you want to print. All right, so that's going to be our user's prompt. We're telling them to enter in a string you want to print, then we read in that string, then we print it out. Very, um, very simple program, uh, or, or I guess basic. So we create our scanner object, and you see here in memory, we have an input variable, and you see it's a java.util instance. So it's an object of that. Um, scanner. So now we're asking the user to please enter in the string you want to print. And unfortunately, in this, we cannot type in the console. So I have to switch to NetBeans. And now NetBeans doesn't work. So hold on. I think I updated my Java. I can't use JGRASS. All right. So JGRASS is another Java um, IDE, Integrated Development Environment. It just doesn't provide you all of the, the assistance that uh, NetBeans does. So if you notice, when you create a Java class like I just did, it comes with nothing inside that class. There's no basic template or anything. I'm trying to zoom in for you. If I can, there we go. So again, we have to create our class, hello world. In our main. All right, let's do this over. Scanner input equals new scanner string args. System.out.println, please enter the string you would like to print. And then we say string hello equals input.next. 
and system.out.println hello. And again, we have to import our scanner in from the library. Import java.util.scanner. And hopefully this runs. Let's see. Oh. There we go. So again, JGraph is what I should have used for you all last semester because it forces you to do everything yourself. NetBeans gives you a lot of helpful hints. JGraph does not. So I run this. It says, please enter the string you would like to print. Hello world. And it should print back. Well, I use dot .next. Let's do dot .next line. Dot .next line reads in the entire next line. So if you notice down here, if I can zoom in, before I had dot next, right? If I have dot next, it reads in one word and stops at the, um, the space. So if I type in hello world, it's only gonna read in the first word. However, if I do dot next line, it reads in this entire line right here. So I do this again. Type in hello world. It reads in the entire line. All right. Does that make sense? I need some head shaking or something. Yes, sir. All right. Again, if none of this, if this doesn't make sense, Right now, send me an email and I'll be happy to help you outside of class or whenever. But class is one of the best opportunities to ask me questions while I'm doing it. These first couple of weeks are all review. So if you don't understand it while we're reviewing, please speak up in class, all right? Because I wanna get everybody up to a certain point where we can start talking about multi-dimensional arrays, all right? Which would be the first week of February. And so as you notice, all of these class periods are going to be review, which means that I need you all to have some input from what I'm doing as well, right? All right I wish I could type in the console here, but it's okay. All right, so we read the string from the console. Now let's, re let's do something a little bit more advanced. Let's read in somebody's birth year and then calculate their age based on that birth year, all right? So instead of this, we'll say, please enter your birth year. Instead of a string, it'll be int year equals input.next int, all right? We wanna read in the next integer. And remember, integers are whole numbers if I put a double right here, that means that I'm expecting a number with a decimal, double decimal integer whole number. So a birth year should be an integer. And now age should also be an integer. We don't, we're not, you know, 12 months old. We're not three and a half years old. By the time you get to 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, um, we don't do those half years anymore. It's just another number. And age equals, that's 2021 now, minus year. All right, so let's print out your birth year was add in year. So your age is, we add in age. All right, so what I'm doing here is I am concatenating these numbers to these, this string. 
right? I'm concatenating. Technically, if you want to break it down, I'm adding these numbers to the string. So it's going to say your birth year was whatever. So your age is whatever we calculate up here, right? Again, this is another benefit of having variables. Variables store this data. So year stores this data, right? It reads in from the console and stores it in year. Then we calculate the age based on whatever this equation is and stored in age. And now we print it all out. So let's print this. All right, so let's say, please enter your birth year, I don't know, 1965. So that person would be technically 56 years old, you know, give or take what month they were born in. So let's, I'm gonna do, hopefully, I don't know the ages of all of you in here, but um, I was born in the 90s. I imagine some of you were born in the 2000s, which makes me feel <laughs> very old. But let's do, I don't know, 2000. So you would be 21 years old, give or take. Thank you. Somebody else who was born in the 90s, I don't feel as old anymore. So you're roughly about 22, 21 years old. Um, and so this is another very basic program, right? We're reading in the age from the console. We are ca or we're reading in the birth year from the console, and then we're printing out whatever that age is. All right, that makes sense. Some head shakes. I know it's early, but um, some feedback. I would. I would like to hear some feedback. So I'm just gonna go down the line. Dorian, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Gabriel, does that make sense? Well, I think Tom Brady's legacy. Um, what about Tom Brady? <laughs> does it make sense, Gabriel? Yes. All right. Yes. Hey. Yeah, it makes sense. Mike? Yeah, it makes sense. Josh? Yeah, it makes sense, but I'm going to email you. I ain't even going to cap. <laughs> All right. No problem. Panache? Yes, it does make sense. All right, cool. All right, so we've done that. Now let's make it, let's take it a step further. A little bit, let's put it into a a context that I think you all would recognize. So let's talk sports. Okay. For this program, I want to read in whoever's scoring average. I also want to read in the number of games they've played. And based on those two variables, calculate the total amount of points they've scored. All right. So for example, if their scoring average is, um, Let's talk soccer first. If their scoring average is 1.2 goals per game, I think that's a pretty standard or a good scoring average. Um, and they've played, I don't know, 30 games. Their total amount of points scored is what? I don't know. It's roughly 33 points, if you will, 34. I don't know. So, Let's calculate that using this program. So the first thing we want to do is read in the scoring average. So let's prompt the user system dot out dot print line. Please enter the scoring average. Scoring average should be a double, right? Because it should have some type of decimal point to it. Double scoring average equals input dot next double all right now let's read in or prompt them for the number of games played please enter the number of games played so number of games played should be an integer right 
you shouldn't be playing half a game. If you played one minute, technically you played in that game. Games played equals input dot next int. All right. So now, can anybody tell me how we're going to calculate the total amount of points scored? Uh, multiply. Multiply what? Points times games played. Yep. So for this example, we might have some decimals when it comes to um, total amount of points because um, we haven't necessarily done the correct calculations. We're doing typically you get the total amount of points, then you get the total amount of games and calculate the scoring average, but we're kind of doing it the uh, inverse way. We're getting the scoring average and the games played and calculate the total. So we might have decimals. To avoid that, I'm just going to make this an integer total points. It's going to just chop off whatever decimal we have. We do scoring average times games played. All right. Equals that. All right. So now we're calculating the total points and just print it out. System dot out dot print line. Let's do let's do print up here. Total points. And then we concatenate what we calculate. And there you go. So now if I compile it, I get an error. So what is my error? So it's saying, um, possible lossy conversion from double to int. That is because we are technically, when we do this calculation right here, that gives us a double, right? But since I'm storing it in an integer, it's telling me I'm gonna lose some, uh, some of those decimal, I'm gonna lose that decimal point afterwards. And technically it's gonna give me an error. So what I have to do is basically, tell the program that I want to calculate this and turn it into an integer and then store it in total points. That's just, um, it's just gonna raise that error and actually it's gonna raise me another error. What for? Scoring average times games played. Let's see. Oh. My bad, that was Python. Not parse double. How do you explicitly cast in Java? I've been programming in Python so long. Let's see, Java cast double to int. All right, a little bit different. So you do the integer in parentheses. All right, int. And you see, look, like I was saying, I program in Python most times, right? But to go from one language to another is typically something as simple as just changing your, your syntax. So instead of having integer out here in this stuff in parentheses, you put the integer in parentheses and then this stuff over here. So learning Java, you should be able to pick up essentially any other language, just you know, some minor differences. Hopefully this works. It does, it compiles. And just to refresh, compiling a program means that I'm converting it into uh, machine readable code. Running the program is running that code. So this right here is human readable, right? This kind of, we can read this. But turning it into Java readable code, let's see if I can find this. Where is it stored? Uh, I can find it in my documents. 
Where is Jay Graz? I want to show you what it actually ends up as. Where is this stored at? Hold on. And it's not going to tell me where it's stored at. Oh, here it is. It is in my documents. All right. So right here, hello world dot class. When I compile it, it compiles into a dot class file. And if I open this, it does not look readable to humans, right? I, I mean, I can see some words in here that look like human readable words, but for the most part, it's, it's illegible, right? But this is machine code. The machine interprets this and does what we tell it to do. And that's what, what happens when you compile a program. Again, NetBeans kind of glosses over all this for you. But JGraph, you have to um, you have to do these steps. So when I run this, please enter the scoring average. We're going to do 1.2. Please enter the number of games played. We'll do 30. And so the total point scored is 30 because I did an integer right here. If I do a double here, you'll see a different scoring average. 1.2, 30. And so it's 36 now, right? And actually, the reason it did that, and I'm actually surprised that it's a perfect 36. If I redo this, what I did wrong here is I converted scoring average into an integer, then I multiplied it. But I want to do this multiplication first and then convert whatever is the output into an integer. All right, what I did before was I, entered, I, I um, converted scoring average to an integer, so it became 1 times 30 instead of 1.2 times 30. So if I run this again, it should give me 36. 1.2, 30. It gives me 36. Any questions about that so far? All right, let's switch it up. Let's do football, all right? So points scored, let's say we are talking about a, a running back, right? And instead of points scored, we'll do touchdowns. So, so enter the scoring average, the touchdown average. All right, run this. Let's say we're talking about a pretty good running back. So they average 2.5 touchdowns per game. That's a damn good running back. All right, number of games played, they are consistent and they don't miss a game. They played all 16 games. Overall, they scored 40 touchdowns in one season. That's pretty good. That's I don't know if Adrian Peterson ever got that, but I could have seen that. So that's a really good running back, right? Or quarterback, whoever. Let's switch it up. Let's talk about basketball. So in basketball, we are talking scoring average. Let's redo this. Please enter the scoring average. They are averaging 27.5 points per game. They played all 82 games. Overall, over the course of the entire season, they scored 2,255 points. Does that make sense to everybody? Everything I did. I'm going to go down the list again. Dorian, does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Nate? Yep. Pinochet? Yes, it does. So, uh, before you go, so on the end total points equals to uh, eight in parentheses, scoring average times games played. I can just put a double there, and I don't have to put everything in parentheses, right? Correct. So I could make this a double, and I wouldn't need any of this stuff. However, I don't want my output to be a double because you technically can't have half a point or half a touchdown <laughs> with totals. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so I didn't do that. I didn't put it there. I mean, if I want to switch it up, I would ask for the total points scored games and divide this by the amount of games and get the average, but I just didn't do it that way. All right, okay. No problem. All right. Mike, that makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Josh? Yes, sir. All right. And then Gabriel. I didn't hear you. It makes sense. All right. It, it makes sense. All right. All right. So the last thing today is random number generation. So instead of reading from the console, let's generate a random number. So instead of java.util.scanner, I think it's java. Um, we can use math or we can use the random object class. Sorry if I keep going back and forth. Java random object. It's java.util.random. All right. So instead of scanner, we'll do java.util.random. All right. So let's change this. Random rand equals new random. Basically, I'm creating a random object. And actually, I could do this um, using the visualizer since I'm not reading anything from the console. So, java.utah.random. And I'm going to try to use this visualizer as much as possible so that you can see what I'm doing. New random. So I created a random object here. So it's going to say, please enter the string you want to print. Instead of entering it, I'm going to say the random string or the random um, scoring average is, and then um, double scoring average equals random dot next I want to say is next double let's see yeah next double so that next double this gives me a number between zero and one so Get it above that, I'm just going to multiply it times 30. Actually, let's talk soccer. So times two. So that gives me a number between zero and two. And then, yeah, that should be good. System.out.print. I'm going to print this out just so we can see it. All right, so now we've read in the scoring average. Let's read in the total game system dot out dot print the total games played is we will generate a random number for this int games played equals ran. I gotta change it up here. Dot next int. And I believe I can put in yep the uh, maximum value. So the maximum value we'll say is thirty. We'll print that out. System dot out dot print line. Games played. In our equation, total points. That right there. And then we print it out down here. All right. So, okay, to go back through this, we create a random number generator. We're saying the random scoring average is, we're just printing that to the console. We generate a random number between 0 and 2. We're talking soccer right here. 
Then we print out that scoring average, right? Whatever was randomly generated. Then we do system out out the total games played. We do another random number between zero and 30. Then we print that out. We calculate the total points based on the scoring average and the games played. And then we print that out as well. So let's visualize this. Hopefully there's no errors. Perfect. All right, so the first line, we create our random number generator. You see over here in memory, it creates this object. We print out the scoring averages, prints it out to the console. We go to the next line. You see it generated a random number for scoring average and stored it in this variable right here. And we print that out. Bam, that's the scoring average. The total games played is, we print that out. And then we create a random number between 0 and 30 and store it in games played. So if you look at memory over here, games played now equals 5. And we print that out down here. We calculate our total points. So 1.8 times 5, we get this down here. And then we print that out as well. Total points is nine. And we finish. Our main method returns void. Any questions about that? All right, let's switch it up again. Let's talk football. And then... I would do tennis, but I don't know how to change this up for tennis. So we're going to do soccer, football, and basketball. All right. So in football, let's say the random scoring, random touchdowns, again, between zero and three. The number of games played is between zero and 16. So let's visualize this again. We create our random number, our random number generator. You see, we have it, we called it RAND, and it is an object. We print this out. The random touchdown average is, then we randomly create an average, 2.044. We named it scoring average. Then we print this out down here. We do the same thing for games played. You see here, they played 10 games. That was the random number we generated. And we print it out down here. We calculate our total points, our total touchdowns, if you will. And then we print that out, 20. OK? Let's do the same thing for basketball. We're going to do between 0 and 30 going to be their scoring average. They're going to be play between 0 and 82 games. And we're going to print that out. So let's visualize this. We create our random number generator. We named it RAND. We randomly generate a scoring average. They're uh, roughly CJ McCollum, 19.8, somewhere around there, I think. Well, he might be averaging in the 20s. Then we print out the scoring average, games played. They only played 14 games. The total point score was 278, and we print that out. And our main returns void. That's the end of our program. Any questions? All right, if there's no questions, that's pretty much it for today. Again, assignment zero is due on Sunday. You must do it on your own. Do not plagiarize. Um, and yeah, we'll just go from there. On Monday, we'll review, what are we reviewing? On Monday, we're reviewing math, if statements, and switch statements. So we're getting into logic. All right, well, I'll see you on Monday then. I have a good day.
You too. Right. Everybody have a good day. You too. Good game. Have a good day, yeah.